Hello again. Now that we have understood about the quality management system and the ISO's role in it, let us understand in detail the documentation requirement as per the ISO 15189 standard. We'll also in brief talk about the CLSI standards and this particular video is again an overview about the documents needed. We'll go into the details of each level of documentation in the further videos. So let's see this slide. Documentation is a set of policies, processes, procedures and data capture mechanisms required for planning, execution, maintenance and improvement of an organization. So do you understand the gist of it? The final aim is the improvement of an organization. That is the aim of the quality management system and it is done through a set of policies, processes, procedures and data capture mechanisms uh, for the planning that is the first phase before you even start doing anything you would want to plan a quality management system then you would want to implement a quality management system and also to maintain it and to continually improve it so this is the systematic handling of the organizational knowledge in conformity with the iso standard i'm sure all of you would have seen this figure this diagram of the pdca cycle plan do check and add go back to plan do check and add and that is your process of continual improvement and we'll see the levels of documentation in the next slide before that let's look at the standards iso there are three standards that i'm going to talk about here 15189 which is our main standard the one which we already talked about. Another two standards, ISO 9001 and 17025. 15189 is derived from ISO 9001 and 17025. And 9001, it is the guide to develop a QMS. 9001 is a tool to streamline the organizational activities to make them more efficient at what they do offer services of consistently good quality and tells the organization what to do in each area of concern. In a standard, you always are told what to do in each areas that you are looking to improve. So if you look at, we just heard in the last slide that 15189 is formed out of 9001 and 17025 and 9001 is the guiding principles of developing a QMS and in this slide you see the differences or the comparison between the two documents. For details of this you can refer to the standard, it is part of the standard itself how 9001 compares to 15189. Now let's look in brief at CLSI and it's again the same kind of a model management and technical requirements but it actually shows the sample path and defines the areas that management requirements are in input. This is your technical requirement, this is what we talked about in the previous video, pre-analytical, analytical and post-analytical and how the management should support in the documents and records, in the personnel, purchasing and inventory, information management, assessments, customer service and satisfaction, organization, equipment, process control, occurrence management, process improvement, facilities and safety. It is pretty much the same as ISO and it is derived from ISO also. Uh, so it talks about the same thing only in a different way. So these are some pictures of, uh, this is a PCLSI standard. And this is a standard which uh, in ICMR also has got standards about good clinical laboratory practices. It's called the GCLP. So these are also guidelines that you can use to improve your laboratory. The ISO's uh, components are called the quality system essentials. And the in 15189, the sections are divided into management technical requirements. If you look back at the earlier slide, you, know, you see that the sample path here is a technical requirement and this are the management requirements. It is it's a restating of the same thing in this same, it is depicted in a different way, that is all. And now we are coming to the details of the QMS. Documentation plus QMS is the documented QMS and the documentation in a QMS 
should be to establish a QMS, to implement a QMS and to maintain a QMS. So, we will go to the structure of what the documented QMS is like. In brief, it is writing what you have to do and writing how you have to do it, do what you have written, prove it and improve it. This is the gist of a quality management system. Once again, write what to do, write how to do, do what you write, prove it and improve it. So, how do we accomplish that? Back to the PDCA, plan, do, check and act. So, can you say where documents and records happen in the PDCA cycle of a well documented QMS? Let us examine. Let us look at the document hierarchy. Document hierarchy runs in parallel to the authority hierarchy in a laboratory. Initial level of documents or the strategic documents, these are the planning documents and these are to be done through the management or the board or the administrative uh, part, uh, administrative uh, side of the laboratory or the institution and the second is a tactical level or the doing level and this is again done by management also technical supervisory uh, personnel and finally, it is an operative level which is done by the staff, the frontline workers, again the technical supervisory staff, the lab attendants, housekeeping staff, everyone is involved in the quality management system. So, let us say it again, look at it again, the strategic level which is done by the upper management, tactical level by the technical supervisory staff on management also again, operative level or operational level which is done by the all the staff of the laboratory. So, this is the hierarchy that is seen in a laboratory in any institution and the document system will also follow the same hierarchy. To understand the previous slide better, we have laid the flow of authority as a pyramid again with the document names here. These are your policy documents or your planning documents. The planning documents are made to establish a quality management system and are generally named the level 1 documents. In the second layer, you see the doing documents. If these tell you what to do, these will tell you how to do it. So, these are used for implementing a quality management system and are generally termed level 2 documents and they include the QSPs or the quality system procedures or just procedures which are generally used for non-testing procedures and the standard operating procedures generally used for testing procedures. And in the third level you have the data capture documents which include formats and records. These are generally term level 3 document, they are used for maintaining the QMS, the quality management system. So, these are the policy documents or the what to do documents for establishing a QMS. These are the procedure documents or the how to do documents for implementing a QMS and these are the recording documents, formats and records for maintaining a QMS, the level 3 documents. So, in this video we are teaching it as a 3 level hierarchy, but in some teachings it can be said as a 4 level or even a 5 level. It really does not matter how you talk about the layers of the hierarchy as long as you understand the hierarchy, the flow of authority of the documents. And in this, uh, there is this line here which says live which mean documents in that is not part of this records here. Why do you think that is so? This is because all these documents are subject to change. A quality manual, the planning document, the management that's just given you, they find that it can be done better, that requires a change, they can change it. So, it is subject to change. Similarly, the procedures, the standard operating procedures are subject to change. It has to be reviewed, looked for suitability and it has to be amended. Therefore, the, the planning documents also are subject to, sorry, the, the doing documents are also subject to change. And in the capturing evidence documents, the formats 
can be changed but records once the data is recorded cannot be changed so this is no more no longer a live document it is a document that has ca data captured and any kind of change to the captured data amounts to fraud so therefore it cannot be changed therefore it's not a live document and along with that there's one more thing that we need to understand we we talked about policies and procedures in the earlier slide but we have one more component here which is called the processes processes are policies that flow to become procedures processes are a group of procedures that is flowing out of the policy we'll hear more about processes in the subsequent slides so once again, we need to look at the definitions of policies. We have talked about the policy documents, the quality manual with the quality policy in it. And they tell you what to do. These are planning documents and it's a written statement of the overall intention and directions defined by those in the organization and endorsed by the management. Policies tell you what to do in a broad and general way, include the organizational mission, goals and purpose and serve as a framework for the quality system and should always be specified in the quality manual. Here second is the processes and the processes as we saw in the picture of the tree it tells you how it happens here it is a set of interrelated or interacting activities that transform inputs into outputs. Processes describe the steps involved to carry out quality policies easily represented in flowchart and involve a series of steps usually occurring over a period of time. We will see the details of this in subsequent slides. And coming to procedures, how to do it. So going back, policies tell you what to do, processes tell you how it happens here and procedures tell you how to do it. Testing uh, procedures are generally depicted as standard operating procedures. We have already seen that and it is a step by step instruction of performing a single activity. Job aid is a shortened version of an SOP and does not replicate an SOP. More about this will come in the subsequent videos. And non testing procedures are called quality system procedures or mandatory procedures or just procedures. So there's a, there are two kinds of the how to do it documents testing and non-testing SOPs and procedures. And just to recap once again, what we have learned, how to do it, procedures, how it happens here, processes, what to do, policies. It is like an, the pyramid set upside down, the, the document hierarchy pyramid. You know, in the pyramids, we started at the top with policies and at the second level procedures, it is an upside down version of the same thing uh, to explain the concept. This is again a recap. In the pyramid form, quality manual, the policies, planning, establishing, level 1, okay. Level 2, the doing or the procedural documents or implementing the QMS. This is the level 2 and you have the processes which flow from the policy into the procedure. These depict the processes. And finally, you have the maintaining part, formats and records in the level 3. So, the upper management tells you what to do. It is a responsibility of the technical supervisory staff, the doctors in the laboratory to actually define these. Quality system procedures may require some management inputs, but technically this is the responsibility of the technical team. And after this has been done, the formats also are designed by the technical supervisory team and they hand it over to the frontline staff who will do the activities and maintain the records. So this is the gist of the quality management system documents overview. Once again to recap documents and records, documents, information for their activities, records, information from their activities. This is all recap from what we learned already. Documents are live entities, records are non-live or maybe you can call it dead also and documents tell you how to carry out an activity whereas records how the activity was carried out and the results of the activity done and documents are subject to change, record not subject to change, retention period of obsolete documents is variable as per life policies, 
retention period has to be clearly in the case of records has to be clearly defined as per local regulations every regulatory body will have mandatory requirements on how much to retain a record that has to be followed whereas in the case of a laboratory document when you change it you keep some obsolated documents for reference later but there is no set guideline on how much time it has to be retained and once again between formats and record previous slide was about documents and records formats and records again the last part of the pyramid if you remember the format is a document designed to capture the evidence i hope you remember what we talked about look at the pyramid again the 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 beach part of it the document is uh, designed to capture the evidence of an activity format is the evidence of a captured activity which is done and it has been captured it is live and can be amended dead and cannot be amended one more important thing is formats are approved and issued by the designated authority before use and approved before issue and the records are approved after the activity you, an activity is done for instance a quality control has been done it's a technical supervisory staff who will have to approve of whether the controls are within acceptable ranges or not so it is approved after the activity is done recap again i am assuming that all of you know about it policy procedure formats and records this is planning execution maintenance responsibilities for the management responsibility for the technical supervisory team up until here this is the responsibility of the frontline worker this is called level 1 level 2 level 3 in this particular video it can be differentially termed in other other teachings and it really doesn't matter as i said earlier it depends you just need to understand the flow of authority of each document up until here all these are live and therefore they are called documents and records are ones which already with the captured data not subject to change thank you